Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 confusing horror movie endings explained. Six hours, it'll be 100 below in here. For this list, we'll be looking at some confusing, dense, or ambiguous horror movie endings and trying our best to explain them. Confusing doesn't mean at all bad, obviously. A lot of these are classics, just that they're definite thinkers. Oh, and spoilers, obviously. What are your interpretations of these endings? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10, The Witch. Robert Eggers' modern masterpiece is not a happy movie. But I tell thee, I have raised up no witch in this house. Let us pray. By the end, Thomason's family is either missing or dead. She speaks to a mysterious man and then ascends into the sky. But what the heck is going on there? The answer lies in The Goat. Ba, ba. Ba, ba, ba. What else can I come from? As suspected, Black Phillip is indeed Satan. With nowhere to go and her god having abandoned her, Thomason decides to make a deal with the devil. Did you not think I saw? I saw to him, him bewitching his eye. In his own terrifying words, Thomason wishes to live deliciously. After making the pact, Thomason joins a coven in the woods and joyfully embraces her new status as a witch. Individual viewers can take from this what they will, but either way, it's not a happy ending. Number 9, Hereditary. This is a very tough movie to nail down, and its ending is even tougher. Hereditary is centered around a demon named Payman. Annie's mother, Ellen, was part of a coven that's trying to provide Payman with a male corporeal body. We've corrected your first female body and give you now this healthy male Host. Payman makes his way through various family members before possessing Annie, and this is what causes her to go after her son, Peter. Once Annie takes her own life, Payman's spirit finally transfers itself into Peter's body, and he's joyfully crowned by the coven. It's unclear what will happen after this, but it probably won't be good. Number 8, The Babadook. Some movies are basically just visual metaphors that aren't meant to be taken literally. That seems to be the case with The Babadook. The titular monster is an obvious stand-in for things like depression, grief, and mental illness. I understand you're scared. I haven't been good since your dad died. I haven't been good at all. Amelia battles with the Babadook throughout the movie, before banishing it to the basement. You're trespassing in my house! She continues to feed the Babadook, and it threatens to overtake her from time to time, but she manages to stay calm and the monster remains subdued. How was it? It's quiet today. The Babadook living in Amelia's basement is a metaphor for her mental health. Amelia has imprisoned the Babadook, and while she still acknowledges its existence, she now has the confidence and fortitude to live with it. Number 7, Us. Jordan Peele is the new master of socially conscious horror, and Us is another solid entry in his filmography. How it must have been to grow up with the sky, to feel the sun, the wind, the trees, but your people took it for granted. We learn that clones called the Tethered live underground and were created by the government to control their surface counterparts like puppets. We also learn that Matriarch Adelaide is actually the original Tethered and Red is the real Adelaide as they swapped places in the prologue set decades earlier. And to think, if it weren't for you, I never would have danced at all. The bleak ending suggests that the Tethered have taken over America and have killed, or will kill, all their human counterparts. It's a dour ending for humanity, as everyone seems doomed. Of course, it's also dripping with metaphor, with themes steeped in uprisings, revolutions, and social inequalities. I didn't just need to kill you. I needed to make a statement. Those are completely up to personal interpretation. Number 6, The Lighthouse. Robert Eggers loves his dour endings, that's for sure. I don't have nothing to confess, but you, spilling your beans, look what it's done to you. It's made you mad. As is made quite obvious throughout the movie, the titular lighthouse isn't meant to be taken literally. 
The answers to this movie lay in its influences, primarily the story of Prometheus. Wake even mentions Winslow suffering a Promethean fate as he's buried alive, and this is indeed what he gets. Oh, what protean forms swim up from men's minds and melt in hot Promethean plunder. Winslow is looking for the mythical and unknowable answers, and he believes that those answers are found in the lighthouse. He goes mad with greed and kills its protector before ascending the lighthouse and attempting to attain the knowledge that it harbors. He believed that there was some enchantment in the light. He notioned that St. Elmo had cast his very fire into it. However, humans were not meant to indulge in this knowledge, and like Prometheus, Winslow is rejected and punished for his attempt. Number five, The Blair Witch Project. The creepiest, <laughs> the uh -oh. creepiest story <laughs> about moment, her that I ever heard was that two men were out hunting uh -huh. and they were camped near the cabin or something that she's supposed to haunt. Uh -huh. Many people were left disappointed with this movie's ambiguous ending. So what was it all about? The answer is found in the nondescript interviews given at the beginning of the movie. Locals tell the crew of Rustin Parr, an old murderer who killed his victims in pairs, making one victim stand in the corner while he dispatched the other. So he made one face into the corner. Really? And then he would kill the other one. This is exactly what happens with Mike and Heather. Mike is made to stand in the corner. Heather is seemingly butchered, and Mike is presumably killed soon after. Unfortunately, that's where the answer ends. Was Pa still alive? Was the Blair Witch mimicking his M.O.? You believe in witchcraft? No. No? No, sir. Are you a religious man? Yep. Alrighty. The 2016 sequel seemingly confirms the existence of a witch, but not much else. Number four, American Psycho. Patrick Bateman is one of the most famous fictional serial killers and is played to perfection by Christian Bale. Because it's not just about the pleasures of conformity and the importance of trends, it's also a personal statement about the band itself. Hey, Paul! Unfortunately, nothing about his character is really answered or made clear. We don't know if he's actually a serial killer or just a repressed sociopath who harbors extremely violent thoughts. In fact, I want my pain to be inflicted on others. I want no one to escape. The truth is left intentionally ambiguous, and it's completely up to the individual viewer to make up their own conclusions. But the true body count doesn't really matter. So what do you do? I'm into, uh, well, murders and executions mostly. American Psycho is a satire, first and foremost, and it has its pulse right on late 80s America. Everyone is so self-absorbed and obsessed with surface-level ideals that they don't notice the monster hiding beneath the surface. Number three, The Thing. The ending of The Thing continues to be debated decades after its release. Why don't we just wait here for a little while? See what happens. But like American Psycho, the specifics don't really matter. All we know is that Charles and McCready still don't trust each other and will likely die together in the cold. Why has got the temperature up all over the camp? Won't last long though. The movie is all about distrust and paranoia, and the ending is just a small continuation of that theme. Like most great movies, The Thing reflects the time in which it was made. Released at the height of Cold War tensions, The Thing criticizes the second Red Scare. I'm not gonna harm anybody, and there's nothing wrong with me. And if there was, I'm all better now. This saw America deeply paranoid that it was being invaded and assimilated by communists. The Thing argues that without trust, society falls apart and will only cause its own destruction. Number two, Mother. A very disturbing movie from Darren Aronofsky, Mother serves mainly as a biblical allegory. Who are you? What are you doing here? What are any of us doing here, right? Where's my mother? Therein lies the answer to its weird and ambiguous ending. The mother is Mother Earth, and humanity nearly beats her to death, a likely metaphor for climate change. However, Mother Earth fights back and destroys the house, metaphorically killing all of humanity. I gave you everything! You gave it all away. Him is God, and at the end of the movie, he asks the dying Mother Earth for another try. 
Mother agrees, the ruined house is made new again, and the cycle repeats. Oh, I must try it all again. No. Just let me go. It seems that Aronofsky has a pessimistic view of both God and human nature, arguing that God will always create flawed humans who are always destined to destroy their homes. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Shining Stanley Kubrick's masterpiece contains one of the most confounding endings in the genre's history. Danny and Wendy make their escape, and Jack freezes to death. <laughs> It seems pretty cut and dry, but then Kubrick throws one last twist at us and shows a picture from 1921. Front and centre is none other than Jack. Countless theories have been thrown around, like Jack having been assimilated into the metaphysical hotel, but Kubrick has actually addressed the ambiguous ending, stating that 1980 Jack was meant to be a reincarnation of 1921 Jack. This proves what Grady said earlier about Jack always being the caretaker. But you are the caretaker. You've always been the caretaker. Now, what this actually means for Jack and the hotel is up to interpretation. Kubrick was not one for giving straightforward answers. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.